What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and today we're talking about something that doesn't really get much coverage, coffee filters. Now when it comes to the coffee industry, we're always trying to innovate. Whether it's new machines with crazy new features, new kettles, new tools, new gear, we're always pushing to make a better cup of coffee. But there's not a lot of people out there pushing to innovate the humble paper filter. But now, Cafic has put some science to work and developed a new set of coffee filters that are intended to be used with specific roast levels. Already, many savvy baristas are making adjustments when it comes to brewing different roast levels, whether it's brew water temperature or grind size and other variables that we always are thinking about. But one side that's just seemingly obvious that we haven't really toyed with is the humble paper filter. What makes Cafex filters different is their proprietary hot air drying system that does something they call creping or a crepe-like texture on the surface of the paper. So basically, it's this texture that's on the inside, outside, and they can control that texturing and to what degree it's textured. But that creping technique isn't the only ace up Cafex sleeve, as they're also toying with the paper filter thickness in general, as well as the density of the mesh used in the specific papers. So they have a lot of control here, and they say that these different aspects of the filter can elevate the positive side of certain roast levels and kind of mitigate the negative side of roast levels. So I really wanted to see if there's any truth to this. So to put these to the test, I bought a full set of CAFX filters that comes with each roast level and the standard paper filter. Each test will be conducted with a control group using the standard filter next to the roast specific model. Each test will also use a grind size based on my understanding of extracting different roast levels as well as my experience using the niche. This will also serve to show how much things can vary from one roast level to another, purely based on the filter alone, which is one variable that is often ignored. Each pour over will be made using a recipe of 20 grams of coffee and a 40 gram bloom with a quick stir. Then after 30 seconds, a 150 gram circular pour will be completed at a medium pace, followed by a slow continuous center pour to the max brew weight of 300 grams, and finally finished off with a quick swirl during the drawdown. First up are the light roast filters that claim to be focused on creating more aroma and a cleaner cup of coffee. According to Cafec, these are the thinnest papers of the set coming in at 0.15 millimeters, but they also have the highest density mesh of the set. In terms of texturing, they are creped on the outside and smooth on the inside. This smooth interior is intended to create a smaller surface area that allows more fines to stick to the walls of the filter and slow your drawdown to create more aroma. And the crepe texture on the outside of the filter is supposed to assist any coffee that accumulates outside the filter a less obstructed downward flow. And finally, having that thick mesh effectively filters out any fines or sediment that would normally make it through a standard filter, creating a clean cup with zero sediment. First up, I brewed a pour over with the standard paper filter for my tasting control group. These recipes were exactly the same, even ground on the same number. Both filters performed nearly the same until the drawdown was about halfway through. At that point, the standard filter slowed to a crawl and finished at 4 minutes and 17 seconds, while the light roast filter flowed freely and finished at a more reasonable 3 minutes and 34 seconds. This resulted in two very different outcomes in terms of taste and extraction. Both coffee beds came out pretty similar, albeit a little bit muddy considering the finer grind size. The standard paper filter created a pour over with a weak aroma that faintly smelled of the fruit notes that are in this coffee. It tasted over extracted with a bitter and hollow flavor overall. The extraction percentage confirmed the over extraction with a 25.22%. The light roast filter was able to handle the finer grind size and stride with a much fruitier aroma, even sporting some delicate melon notes, which have definitely drove some baristas to madness trying to bring out. As I expected, the extraction percentage was a bit lower at 18.98%, which I would attribute to the denser filter blocking some of those solubles from slipping through. But as advertised, the overall flavor was cleaner with more subtle notes coming through than my previous experiences with the same coffee. Next up, we're digging into the medium roast filters. Now these would be my go-to option as medium roast is kind of where I live my coffee life in general, and so if these actually work as advertised where they claim to create more balance and flavor, these are gonna be something that are on my bar moving forward. Now these medium filters are the thickest of the set, coming in at 0.28 millimeters, 
but on the flip side, they have the lowest density mesh of the set. In terms of the creeping texture, the medium filter sports it on both sides. This is intended to create a larger surface area, which in turn allows for a smoother drawdown even when fines are present. So according to Kafek and their theory behind this filter, this smoother flow rate will result in a better balance in your cup. For this test, I adjusted the grind size one notch coarser, as well as let the water come off boil for about 10 seconds before beginning my pours. Starting with the standard paper filter, I brewed up a pour over following the same recipe as previous tests. Then followed it with an identical run through using the medium filter. These two ran nearly identical to each other in terms of the time, with the standard filter coming in at 3 minutes and 17 seconds, and 3 minutes and 30 seconds for the medium filter. The beds of both pour overs are somewhat different with more grind sticking to the sides of the row specific filter compared to the standard, which is interesting as both of them are textured on both sides, but the standard filter appears to be a bit rougher in texture. Also, the extraction percentages were pretty close with the standard filter falling at 20.02% and the row specific falling at 20.54%. It wasn't until the taste comparison that differences became pretty apparent. The standard filter really dwelled heavily on the bitter side of this coffee that sort of overtook all of the other flavors in the mix. In an almost shockingly different cup of coffee, the medium roast filter pulled a massive amount of balance out of seemingly nowhere. This roast was intended for espresso, but it shined in this pour over with plenty of sweetness to balance out the bitter and carried through more clearer flavors than its standard counterpart. Now this is one that I'd rarely if ever use as I'm not a big dark roast drinker, but I was really curious and wanted to try them out. Given the performance of the other two filters before this one, I was really curious to see if this could really provide more sweetness and body to these dark roast coffees than more of that bitter, intense, roasty flavor that I'm expecting. The thickness and density of the dark roast filters falls directly in the middle of the light and the medium. In terms of the crepe texture, this dark roast filter has it on both sides similar to the medium roast filter, but it's toned down to be a little less rough. This design is intended to allow for a faster flow at the beginning of the brew, but to begin to slow things down towards the end, which Capex says will create more body and sweetness. For this test, I adjusted the grinder one more notch coarser and allowed the water to cool for about 20 seconds off boil before starting my first pour. As with the other tests, I brewed up the first pour over using the standard paper filter and then did the same thing using the dark roast filter. The standard filter finished at 2 minutes and 45 seconds, which is a bit faster than I expected, followed by the dark roast filter at 3 minutes and 4 seconds. Both beds look very similar with a significant amount of grinds still left on the sides even after the finishing swirl. In terms of extraction percentages, the row specific filter walked all over the standard with a respectable 20.80% over the standard's 17.55%. The standard filter created a cup that leaned into the roasty side of the spectrum with some pronounced but not unpleasant bitterness. I'd say similar to semi-sweet chocolate, but overall a relatively flat flavor profile with a medium body. But the dark roast filter managed to bring out the best of this coffee. The semi-sweet turned into more of a richer, sweeter, smoother chocolate and a much fuller body. When I first heard of these filters, it made my spidey sense tingle. I've been in the coffee game for a minute now and I've seen a lot of gimmicks come and go. But after trying these out, these filters are the pour over advancement I didn't even know I wanted. If you already have the perfect grinder, coffee, kettle, dripper, and scale, you've already invested well over 100 if not far more into your pour over game, so why not drop another $9 on filters that are specific to the roast level you prefer? In the end, Cafec did the science. They've got the graphs and the microscopic photos and they've done the research, but in my mind, you can't argue with what's in the cup and the taste really stands alone and speaks for itself. Filters seem like an often overlooked piece of the coffee brewing kit, but in reality, they're a massive component to creating a great cup of coffee. But now, I wanna hear from you. Have you heard of these filters or even tried them? They came out a few months ago, but seem to have fallen below the radar for some reason. Let me know your thoughts on these, all things coffee and filter related down below, and as always, I'll see y'all next week.
A big thank you to my August Patreons, Ads, James B, David, Christopher, John K, Squeegee, Roe, Brian, Lisa, Thomas B, Andre, Rick Racer, Sean, Noel, Spookus, Bound Coffee, Mika, Samantha, Nathan, Claire, Steven, James K, Josh, Andrew Horrison, Bobby, Corey C, Curry, Ninja Warrior Coffee, Testing123, Jason, Dave B, Jerry, Marcus, RD, Tim, Matt, Tony, Zachary V, Tyler, and UK Espresso. And of course, a big thank you to the Barista and Barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and in the upper right hand corner right now. And last but not least, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Follow my Instagram at Prometheus for content throughout the week. My blog at Prometheus.com. My coffee at LittleGiant.coffee. And as always, stay caffeinated, Pony Boy. <laughs>